Sure. So, uh, guys, uh, uh, we're going to briefly look at uh, what is financial modeling, where is financial modeling use, is used. Uh, after that, we'll uh, look at a small case study of a small financial model looking at uh, a business decision where we would have we would have to make a decision to uh, invest in a, a wellness forever franchisee. We'll look at uh, the forecasting and at the end, we'll make a decision if it makes sense to invest in the franchising or not. Okay, so uh, financial modeling is, you know, uh, most highly valued, but not not understood uh, kind of skill in financial analysis. Uh, the objective financial uh, the object uh, objective of the financial modeling is uh, to uh, combine uh, your accounting skills, your financial skills, as well as your business acumen to create uh, a forecast of uh, the company's future results. Right. So basically, uh, you would create a spreadsheet with. Uh, all the three statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow, you'll have the historical data. Uh, using your understanding of the business, you will try to, uh, basically with your understanding of the business and your understanding of financial statements, you would forecast the future year's uh, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. Uh, once you're done with that, then you would try to make sense out of that uh, using uh, uh, the free cash flows and the ratios and try to make sense if the uh, project, if the company is worth investing into or not. So it's uh, a combination of a lot of skills. It's a combination of your mathematic skills. It's a combination of your uh, Excel skills. It's a combination of your financial uh, statement analysis skills. It's uh, a combination of your business acumen of that uh sector of that business so it needs a lot of uh, uh skills uh, that we all combine into when we create a financial model we have uh, a franchisee of wellness forever pharmacy uh, uh they usually they sell 200 strips per day of a low budget drug which has an average contribution of 25 rupees a strip and then they also sell a 150 strips a day of a high budget drug which has an average contribution of 35 rupees per strip, right? Uh, so these are your sales volume as well as average price that you're getting on each strip. Uh, both of these volumes as well as price are expected to grow at a 5% per annum, right? Uh, so to operate this franchisee, uh, you require a 75, 7, 750 square feet space of a retail shop which has a rental of thousand a uh, hundred rupee per square feet a month, right? And you have a rental contract for five years where you have a deposit of ten lakhs at the start. Or you require a one-time renovation of the premises, which is worth twenty lakh rupees, right? Uh, which will be incurred at the start itself, and uh, you require one person to operate this franchisee, uh, which will cost you around. Uh, 80,000 a month and uh, wage inflation is around 7%. Uh, there are some other operational expenses as well, right? AC, electricity, and so on, which is around 25% of your sales. And uh, the tax rate is 35%. And uh, the initial investment uh, could be funded through 60% bank loan. 60% of the fund, uh, the initial uh, funding could happen through banks. Uh, where your interest rate is 12%. Uh, the remaining 40% has to be funded through equity, which is your own money. Uh, this is a five-year project. So you have to pay back your debt after five years. And uh, the other investment opportunity for you is a 20% return opportunity. So you will only make, you will only invest in this business if you're making more than 20%. Right. So we have to evaluate uh, this business opportunity where a project life is five years. After five years, this franchisee will be uh, handed back to the wellness forever team and you will get your deposit back. So uh, we will have to make a decision whether we have to make an investment in this company or not. So basically your in internal return on the IRR has to be more than 20% 
for you to invest in this kind of business so we we've seen some uh, i've seen some other people join in as well so i'll i'll repeat this for everyone uh, guys we looked at uh, what is a financial model what skills are required and where it is applied and who can use it but uh, i wanted you guys to have a gist of an actual financial model so that's why we are going to look at the small project where uh, wellness forever pharmacy we are, we are able to get a franchisee of wellness forever pharmacy we want to see if this makes sense or not uh, so there are some prices pricing and volume assumptions and uh, we you, so you you could sell 200 strips of a low budget drug at 25 rupees uh, profit and you could sell 150 strips of a high budget drug at a contribution of 35 rupees both volume and pricing are going to grow by 5% every year right uh, you require a 750 square feet retail space uh, which has a rental of 100 rupees per square feet a month you require a 10 lakh of deposit at the start right you'd also need the 20 lakhs for renovation you require uh, employee cost of 80000 rupees per month inflation is 7% other expenses like air conditioning electricity and uh, your licensing costs that's around 25% of your sales right tax rate is 35% and uh, your initial investment right deposit plus renovation can be funded through bank loan 60% through bank loan at a 12% interest rate uh, so that means uh, the rest 40% has to be funded through equity which is our own money uh, debt has to be paid after 5 years right and uh, you have an opportunity where uh, you could get a return of 20% so that means that for you to invest in this project you need to make more than 20% so now you have to make a decision should you take this franchisee should you invest in this franchisee or not how do we understand right how do we get to make that decision so for that we are going to make a small project finance case right so this is a commission, a low budget drug and high budget drug. You have volumes per day and with which you can calculate uh, sales. We'll, uh, so let's start and dive in by populating and forecasting numbers. So first year, the commission is 25 for a low budget drug and commission is 35 for a high budget drug and both of these are growing at 5% correct so we are going to gr grow our commission at 5% so I will link this 5% number and fix this and I will grow these numbers for 5 years remember this is a 5 year project only similarly I will try to do a 5% inflation or 5% growth in the high budget drug as well. So you have the gross mark, you have the profits or the commissions on your drug on from this year as well as the next four years, right? Then we can look at what are the units sold, 200 units sold in the first year, 150 units sold in the 150 units sold for the uh, high budget drug, 200 units sold for the low budget drug. And even volumes are growing at 5%. So I will use a 5% growth here and I'll fix this number so that I can drag the formula again. So can I can just drag this formula while the 5% remains constant. So I'll even here, I will grow my volumes by 5% every year. So the, they have been saying that you your volumes as well as pricing grows by 5%. So let's uh, do that, right? So you have your pricing. You have your volumes. Pricing into volumes is your sales. So pricing of drug A into volumes of drug A plus pricing of drug B into 
volume of drug B, right? So this will give you your sales per day, which is 10,250. So 10,250 is your sales per day. You have 360 days in a year. So if we multiply this by 360, what you get is your annual sales, which is 36 lakhs, 90 thousand. So that's your annual sales. You already have growth numbers in your commission as well as volumes. So you just have to use this formula across. What happened? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, we have to fix this as well. So with this, we get to annual sales for all the five years. So the most important part for any business is revenue forecasting or sales forecasting, which we have done pretty well. We have the prices, which grew at 5%. We had the volumes, which grew at 5%. And then we calculated price into volume for drug A, price into volume for drug B, and multiply this by 360 to get annual sales number. So 36 lakhs, 90,000, 40, 40 lakhs, 68,000, 44 lakhs, 49 lakhs, and 54 lakhs. This is our projection for sales of our wellness forever franchisee model. Okay. Um, anyone has any questions in uh, what we have done here before we move forward? Any, any questions, anyone? Okay. So now uh, with sales forecasting, the biggest part done, let's move into the cost and the expense forecasting, right? So what they say is first expense is your rent expense. So they say that you need a 70, 7, 7, 5, 750 square feet space and you have a hundred rupee per square feet exp uh, rent per month. So your per month rental is going to be hundred into 750. So 75,000 rupees is your monthly rental expense. But if you want an annual number, we have to multiply it by 12. So nine lakhs is going to be your annual rental expense. So they haven't given us any uh, inflation numbers. So that remains constant across five years because it's a five year contract. So the rent remains constant of nine lakhs. Salaries, they're telling us it's 80,000 per month. So it's going to be into 12 for a yearly uh, salary expense, nine lakh 60,000. And wage inflation is 7%, right? Let's look at this. The so wage inflation is seven, wage inflation in the economy is seven percent. So we will have a growth in your salary expenses, which is going to be seven percent. So into one plus seven percent. I'm fixing this seven percent so that when I drag this formula towards the right, it uses the same number. So my salary expense, which was 9,60,000 in the first year, grows to 10,27,000, 10,99,000, 11,76,000, 12,58,000. My salary expense continues to go up and up with a 7% inflation. Other operating expenses are 25% of my sales. So I will link that 25% into your annual sales. Simple, right? Other expenses are 25% of sales. 25% is something that I will fix and then I'll drag the formula towards the right. So uh, my sales numbers are being, uh, I'm using the correct sales numbers for that year, but this 25% number remains fixed because I've used, I've fixed that number. Interest expense, 
we will calculate later once we have the debt and the equity schedule, right? Profit before tax, it is going to be your annual sales minus rental expense minus salaries minus operating expense minus interest expense. Once we have fixed the formula, I'll just paste this formula towards the right. Tax rate is going to be 35%. So my tax expenses are going to be 35% of my profits, profit before tax. 35% of my profit before tax. So with this also I can just link the formula towards the future years, right? So now we are left with PAT. So profit after tax is nothing but profit before tax minus taxes. And once we have this formula right, we'll just drag the formula towards right. Okay. So uh, we are done with the income statement. We are left with only the interest expense here. So let's create the debt schedule now. Uh, before that, we require a deposit of 10 lakhs on the rental expense, right? For the for the of the retail space. So we are going to be have we are going to have a 10 lakh deposit. Renovation expense is 20 lakhs. So total investment is going to be 30 lakhs. So it says 10 lakhs deposit at the start. And then the renovation of the premises were 20 lakhs. So 30 lakhs is the investment required, right? And uh, it says that after five years, when the project is over, you have to pay the debt back in lump sum. So you have to pay all of your debt together after five years. And you'll, you'll also get your deposit at the same time. So we can see, keep the same deposit for first year, second year, third year, and fourth year, but in the fifth year, it goes to zero because they're paying back the deposit. Let's look at the debt numbers. So your there's this is there is a 30 lakhs investment. 60% is going to be funded with debt. So 60% into your investment. 18 lakh is going to be funded with debt. So if 60% is invested in debt, remaining 40% has to be funded using equity, which is our own funds, which means 40% into your investment will give you equity, right? So your debt, debt remains same because you're not paying your debt until fifth year. In the fifth year, you're going to pay your debt to zero. Your equity remains same until the fifth. So debt is being paid as lump sum in the fifth year. So you made, you had to make an investment of 30 lakhs, 10 lakh for the deposit, 20 lakhs for the renovation of the premises, out of which 60% is funded through debt and 40% is funded through equity. So 18 plus 12 is 30 lakhs. Okay, fair enough. And debt remains same for four year and fifth year, we are going to pay back the debt. So the debt becomes zero. So let's calculate the interest expense now, guys. So interest expense is going to be your interest rate into your debt. Right? So uh, your interest expense is 12% of your debt, uh, of your de total debt. So you have, now we already had interest expense as a part of profit before tax. So it is correctly deducted from your profit before tax. So your PAT numbers now are fully completed. 
you have your debt schedule, you have your equity schedule, right? Anyone has any doubts in how we have calculated revenue, how we have calculated expenses, how we have calculated profit before tax, but or how we have calculated the debt schedule and the equity schedule. Anyone has any doubts, any problem with anything? We can ask. No problem, guys. You can ask uh, any any small or big doubt you guys have before we move on to the cash flow. Uh, Sir, explain the debt and equity. Okay. So, yeah. The debt, see, look, we had to make an investment, right? Investment com is coming to, uh, we have to invest 10 lakhs for deposit of the retail space. 20 lakhs is required for renovation. So total investment is 30 lakhs. How are we funding this 30 lakhs? They're saying that 60% of this funding can happen through debt. So we calculate 60% of your total investment. So 60% of 30 lakhs is 18 lakhs. Now, if 60% funding is happening through debt, how will the rest of the funding happen, which is 40%? The rest of the funding will happen through equity. Equity means our own money. 40 lakhs or 12 lakhs is something that uh, uh, we own, we will have to put in to start the franchising. So 18 lakhs will come uh, as debt, 12 lakhs will come as equity, 60% number is given by them. What they're saying is, the initial investment can be funded by a 60% bank loan. So we've got this 18 lakh number from there. Okay. Shubham is asking uh, that how we calculated tax. So tax rate they have given us is 35%. Look, the tax rate in the economy is 35%. So tax, uh, we calculated, we always calculate tax on the profit before tax, right? So. 35% of the profit before tax. 35% of your profit before tax brings you to 2,42,025. So every year we calculate 35% into profit before tax of that year. So 35% of 17 lakhs is 6 lakhs. Fair, fair enough, Shubham. Yeah, uh, uh, guys, anyone has any doubts apart from uh, this? Sure. <clears throat> so now, once we have the debt schedule, we also have the equity schedule. Let's look at the cash flow situation, right? So what are the cash flows? So what happens in any project is initially you invest and then you start to make profits and then your cash flows become positive. Right. So your initial investment is going to be 30 lakhs. Correct. So your initial investment is 30 lakhs. Your debt raised is 18 lakhs. Correct. So uh, I'll tell you why this negative and the positive sign, right? So initial investment is 30 lakhs. So that is going out from your savings on, from your account. So that is why it's a minus sign investment will be a cash outflow from our end, right? Uh, we are giving the deposit. We are spending 20 lakhs for innovation, renovation. So that is going to be a cash outflow and cash outflow has a negative sign. We are raising debt of 18 lakhs. So when we are raising debt, we are going to get 18 lakhs. So it's a cash inflow. It has a positive sign. Deposit refund. So there is no deposit refund that is going to happen in the first year. So we keep it zero. Pat we have the profit after tax, right? We link it. So total cash flow is going to be your in, in investment, your debt raised plus deposit refund plus PAT. So basically you have a negative cash flow of 7,50,000 in the first year. Let's see what happens in the second year. So second year, there is no initial investment, right? The investment is already done in the first year. Debt raised or repaid, there's nothing. So zero again, deposit refund. We are not refunding in the second year. So that's also zero. Pat is going to be 5,90,000. So basically your 
total cash flow for second year is going to be 5 lakhs 90000 so when you did an investment of 7 lakh 50000 now you are starting to recover your investment right and you have a positive cash flow of 5 lakh 90000 similarly let's look at the third year similarly no investment no debt raised or repaid no deposit refund and we only have the fat which is profit after tax so your cash flow is going to be 7,46,726. Similarly, let's look at the fourth year as well. Fourth year also, we don't have any initial investment. We don't have any debt raised or debt repaid. There's no debt re deposit refund. We only have the PAT. So what happens is you invested 7,50,000. You got 5,90,000 in the first year. You, lock, you, you got 7,46,000 in 2023. You got 9 lakh 20,000. So you are starting to generate positive cash flows, which is helping. In the fifth year, which is the last year of the project, there is no investment, but we have to pay our debt. Right? We have to. What it says is debt has to be paid at the end of fifth year in lump sum. So you have to pay all your debt in the end of fifth year. So that is going to be minus 18 lakhs. It's so going to be minus 18 lakhs. So <clears throat> no investment done, but debt being repaid, which is minus 18 lakhs. Deposit refund. So deposit is also going to be refunded. Deposit is something that we paid. So now we are going to get that, which is going to be plus 10 lakhs. Deposit will get back, so it's going to be uh, a, a source of cash, a positive cash flow. 18 lakhs is something that we have to re repay, so it's going to be a use of cash. It's a negative cash flow. Pat, we have it again. So here the cash flow is lower because we paid repaid our debt back. So now what we see here is we have a negative cash flow in the first year, but we started to making, uh, st we started making the cash profits and uh, we have almost recovered our money back. So if we sum all the positive cash flows, we have got 25 lakh 72,000 and we have invested just 7 lakh 50,000. So we have got our money back, but let's look at what is our internal rate of return. So what is, what is the rate of return, right? Which is IRR. So we will calculate that to the IRR function. So your IRR, which is your internal rate of return is 79%. So you're making 79% return on your investments in this franchisee model. So while your other opportunity, right? Other investment opportunity, was expected to provide 20%. This project is providing you a rate of 79%. So uh, any one of you, right? Which so would you be investing in this project or not? Anyone? Um, would you guys be investing in this project or not? So this project is making 89, 79% while any other opportunity that this company had is, uh, they, they are returning 20%. So there's a very good chance that, uh, we would be investing in this company or we would in, we'd be investing in this franchisee model. So this is how we have to go through, uh, the forecasting, uh, with the, uh, all the numbers that we have with all the information that we have and to make a decision if we will have we if we could invest in this company in this in this franchisee or not so because the 79 percent return is way 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 more than the 20 20 percent we are going to invest in this project so guys uh before moving forward i would uh, want to ask you guys again if something that we have done here you guys have not understood you want me to repeat or uh, anything that you want to talk about on this project, uh, wellness forever franchisee model. 
before we move into the next step or the next phase of the webinar. Cash flow calculation, sir. Yeah, so cash flow, basically what we are trying to see, what is the end cash flow for the project? So first year, the company invested in the 30 lakhs invested in the deposit as well as renovation, uh, which is being funded by debt as well as equity. Debt raised 18 lakhs. Pat also will show up as a source of cash, right? So this tells you that you have a negative cash flow in the first year. Majorly because you did this investment of 30 lakhs. But as you go forward, you do have, do not have you don't have to make any investments, right? You have already done in the first year. You're not raising any debt or you're not repaying any debt. So that also remains zero. Deposits, you're not getting any deposit refunds. So only remains PAT, which is a source of cash flow. So that remains for first, then third, second, third, and the fourth year. In the fifth year, you have to pay your debt back. So it's minus 18, right? Because it's a outflow. 18 lakhs is something that you're going to pay from your savings account to the bank. So there'll be a debit onto your account. So this is a use of cash. So there's, there'll be a negative sign. Deposit refund. You paid 10 lakhs as a refund. Uh, you paid 10 lakhs as a deposit for your retail space, which you're going to get back at the end. So because you're going to get it back, it's going to be a positive cash flow. And Pat. So all of this together, you're still making a cash flow of three lakhs, which is less, but then still positive, where you are making more incremental returns on your project. You've already got your money back in the second year itself, third year itself. But uh, with this, your IRR becomes at around 79%. So making lot and lot, 79% is way more than the 20% number. Okay, guys, any, any more doubts on this? Any, anyone, any small or big doubt? Shubham, uh, okay. Okay, uh, you want to see how IRR came to 79. So IRR is something, there's an IRR function in Excel. If you see, there's an IRR function, which tells you the internal rate of return of a series of cash flow. Uh, internal rate of return tells you, uh, basically it's a, you have a series of cash flow where you have a negative in, you have a negative cash flow you have investment in the first year and then in the later years you start to get positive cash flows irr function will uh, tell you what is your internal rate of return you just have to put irr and in the values you have to put all of these cash flow values and then in the guess we can keep it blank and uh, this will tell you what is the irr of this project What is the internal rate of return on this part? Okay, uh, Sundaram, is, is this fine? Sundaram, Shubham. So uh, with this, guys, uh, what we'll do is, yeah, Sundaram and Shubham, IRR is a formula in Excel, which we used, which we used here. It's a formula in Excel, correct. So we have this formula in Excel, which gives us the IRR of the project cash flows. Okay. So with this now, we will get back to our presentation.
so uh, with this small case study i wanted uh, you guys to um look at and uh, get a gist of how a financial model looks like um how we forecast sales how we forecast expenses so this was a very this was a very small and a brief uh, um model uh, we look at a bigger and complex models as we go forward but i just wanted uh, to give you all a, all, a, all a just can you guys hear me uh, akash says uh, he can't hear me i just want to check if other guys can hear me anyone sundaram shubham uh, anyone if you can tell me if you guys can hear me okay so yeah uh, uh, hussein can hear me sundaram can hear me and harsh can hear me so i think everyone can hear me everything looks good so uh, guys uh, with with this case study we looked at a small brief about how a financial model looks like uh, and how it helps us taking a decision right uh, so uh, with this franchise if tomorrow uh, wellness forever uh, if med plus you uh, if if you have an opportunity to invest in a franchise if you are in any situation where you have to invest in a company you could take that decision use with a tool and with the help of financial model so this is required whether you be an equity research analyst whether you be a corporate finance analyst whether you be a private equity analyst or whether you be an investment banker you need financial model to take decisions so a very basic tool which you use day in day out right so we'll see how financial modeling skills are required in the job market right a business and the companies are asking this uh, skill day in day out so uh, this is some set of job requirements which i took it from internet so we'll look at the first one evaluate sir it's a it's a financial uh, it's a company which provides financial research services uh, to global clients so if you look at the skills required right first is they need excellent communication skills then they need uh, understanding of accounting concepts financial concepts as well as financial analysis they need understanding of valuation methodolo methodologies they need financial writing skills they need a person who is well versed with building financial models with forecasting so while we are doing financial models you require a uh, uh, valuation would be a part of financial model right financial analysis is part of financial models accounting concepts is a part of financial models so all of these other uh, skills are also required for a financial modeling skill right so once you're once you're well versed and well you are pro in financial modeling you are almost pro in other skills as well right uh knowledge of vba and excel macros is an added advantage so we in this financial modeling course we focus on excel as well let's look at this other um job requirement right uh, so it's an institutional equity research associate who will be focusing on the it sector this is one is for a broking house probably like uh, goldman sachs uh, morgan stanley or even uh, uh, kotak right so location is mumbai education is ca cfa mba ctc is 15 lakhs so uh, the person needs to track it services internet space and film exhibition sector fundamental research to find investment opportunities so it's a buy side role i guess so they have to develop and maintain a comprehensive financial model so in this case uh, he's a buy side equity research analyst and they require to maintain financial models they have to develop financial models from scratch and uh, then uh, highlight earnings releases press releases management analysis meets organized road shows and investment conference to provide a platform for effective communication between buy side and company management but uh, again uh, they highlight how financial models is something an important skill that they require apart from 
getting all of the information about the business, where you can get from earnings releases, press releases, analyst meets, management calls, investment conferences. You keep your eyes and ears open in all of these information sources and use all of that to update your financial models. You'll be assisting a lead equity research analyst. Probably this is a junior role. Will You'll be helping a, a, a senior guy. And you'll be updating your clients with key takeaways and near-term triggers from company earnings. So every when the company earnings happen, you listen to them and then you communicate what, what, what were the key points and the key triggers that you uh, get from the earnings. So again, in all of the important roles that we look at in, in the financial analysis landscape, financial modeling remains a key skill along with other skills such, such as accounting, financial statement analysis, and Excel skills. So uh, guys, we'll look at how mentor me and we can help you uh, get uh, uh, the jobs that you uh, would want to do, right? Jobs that you guys want to get in. So uh, the process that works in at mentor me is uh, first, uh, there's a student onboarding after getting after going through uh, the student's background thoroughly. The course module, the financial model modeling course module includes, uh, we start with first is Microsoft Excel. So we know that Excel remains a key skill for financial modeling. So we will focus on uh, brushing up your Excel skills along with uh, getting you uh, well-versed with advanced Microsoft Excel skills. Once you have, once you're well-versed with Excel, we move on to financial mathematics. So you, uh, with in financial mathematics, we cover concepts such as time value of money. So uh, time value of money, which is, is a very basic concept, but used day in, day out in the financial world, in the financial analysis world. So uh, even if you guys know it, but we want to brush these concepts again. So we focus on financial mathematics, time value of money, before we proceed into financial statement analysis. So in financial statement analysis, we uh, brush up your concepts and focus on income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. Uh, what are the, each of the line items? How are these three statements linkage uh, linked uh, between each other? How do you read a company's balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement? So uh, basically, getting well versed with financial statements and uh, helping students analyzing these financial statements. Directly, we don't move into financial models because before moving into a financial model, you need to know financial mathematics, you need to know Excel, you need to know financial statement analysis. Once you're done with all of these three uh, very basic but important skill sets, we move on to project finance. So we today looked at uh, Wellness Forever case study we looked at look at more uh, complex and more bigger case studies where we uh, look at assumptions when we look at uh, the debt and the equity funding and we create income statement balance sheet and cash flows for these projects and then at the end we calculate the irr and npv of this project to make a decision should we invest in these projects or not once we're done with project finance the last part remains equity valuation and equity research that's where we take a, a real-time case study of a stock, right, which is being traded in the Indian market. We create a model on that company, uh, and then we do a discounted cash flow valuation. And at the end, uh, we have a price target and we have a buy as well as a sell rating on that stock or that company uh, using an equity research, equity valuation model. Uh, once all of these course modules are being completed, we start with your placement process. Uh, as you guys all know, communication skills are very important when you focus and when you face your placement process. And that's when um, we also focus on communication skills where you have uh, communication skills experts which help you improve your communication skills. And after that, uh, you start with your placement process. Uh, Mentor Me Careers helps you building your CVs. We also have mock interviews where even if you have any um, 
shyness, any um, fear about interviews that would go away from your mock interviews. There's a constant feedback that you get on your CVs, constant feedback that you get from your interviews. And uh, we do it in a loop so that your uh, knowledge, your CV and your confidence, it builds over this process. And then there will be a placement support where uh, we will help you with uh, placements and job interviews. So we will send you uh, job interviews where you can go and give interviews. So uh, the unique uh, uniqueness of Mentor Me Careers is there is unlimited uh, batches and there is continuous support on your placements. So we will give you support until you get placed. So you would continuously get job interviews until you get placed. So we don't leave you until you get placed, right? So uh, you could give interviews as much as you want until you get placed. So uh, that's an important thing. And if you think that uh, you still are not, uh, after finishing all the course modules and you think that you want, uh, you want to do the course again, if you want to attend the lectures again, or you want to attend the mock interviews again, you could do it. You could attend uh, the lectures, the live lectures. You could attend the recorded lectures and you could uh, uh, attend the mock interviews and you can sit for placement uh, as long as you want. So as long uh, as you want and until you get placed. So that's a unique thing that we have. So uh, these are, again, some of the course features. We have uh, 200 hours of training. Uh, we have live training as well as recorded lectures, right? Unlimited interviews. So as I said, you could give interviews uh, as long as you want, as long as you get a job, right? A median package at Mentor Me Careers till now has been around uh, four to five lakhs. And uh, we have industry professionals uh, like me, right, uh, which teach you. Uh, they are not some accommodations uh, for not doing their jobs, uh, right? Industry professionals like me, I'm working in this field for around nine years. So I know what it requires, what skills are being required in the industry. So you get uh, all the skill sets and all the uh, information from the horse's mouth, right? And there's lifetime access to the course and you have weekday and weekend classes as per your convenience. So uh, that was it guys from me. If there are any questions, I'll take this. Uh, if you have, if you guys have any questions, I'll, I'll take those. Any question on, um, any question on what this course is about, any question on financial modeling, any question on uh, your career prospects or um, any job, any question, guys, you're free to ask. Sir, which degree you need to do financial modeling? So, I think any bachelor's degree is good enough to do financial modeling. So, uh, you don't have to be from the financial um, field itself. Even if you are from a non-finance background, uh, we will consider you, we will consider everyone from a non-finance background and we will uh, start teaching from scratch. So we will be teaching financial statements and everything from scratch. So any graduate can learn financial modeling skill is what I would say. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, in how many job roles we can do job after completing this course? So, uh, so uh, look, I, I talked about almost all of the core finance profiles need financial modeling. Um, like I talked about investment banking, equity research, private equity analyst, venture capital analyst, valuations, due diligence, 
uh, uh, equity research analyst, the buy side equity research analyst, the sell side equity research analyst. Uh, all of them uh, require financial modeling as a core core role, uh, as a core skill that you require. So, any core finance profile that you could think of needs financial modeling. Okay. Hey guys, uh, any any other doubts? Feel don't feel feel shy, guys. Whatever is your question, feel free to ask. Feel free to ask. Uh, except Excel, okay. Uh, Shubham is asking, uh, except Microsoft Excel, which other tools should we learn? So see, look, uh, Excel is the only tool that we use uh for a financial model apart from excel you need to learn you need to learn what is financial statement analysis you need to learn uh uh basically financial statement analysis accounting is going to be the biggest skill set that you require for financial modeling so you need financial statement analysis you need financial mathematics you need to know time value of money you need to know uh, also about these projects and these businesses so Excel remains a very basic tool, which we need, right? It's essential, but other uh, skill set are, uh, as I told about financial statement analysis, financial mathematics, and your business acumen about that sector is what you would have to know for a financial model. So Gaurav is asking, can we get a job in fund accounting, corporate action or reconciliation? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, even in corporate actions, reconciliation and accounting, uh, you could have a situation where uh, a company A is acquiring company B, for suppose, and you would want to know what is the impact of this acquisition on company B, right? Company A is acquiring company B and what is impact on company B or what is impact on company A? You can't do this unless you have a financial model in front of you. So even in corporate action, reconciliation, you need uh, a financial modeling skill. In fund accounting, you don't require this skill. Fund accounting is where you calculate NAV, which is net asset value of your mutual fund. Uh, this is more of a, I would say, clerical job where uh, you are you are just doing a set of calculations every day, which is not related to companies. It is related to a mutual fund. So in a mutual fund industry where you are looking at fund accounting role, you don't you don't need fun, uh, financial modeling if you are in a mutual fund if you are into the investment team right where they are investing their money into stock market they have to take investment decisions in a day a day in day out right which stock should they invest in which stock which they should not invest in that role will require financial modeling fund accounting role will not require financial modeling but fund accounting is a very uh, Fund accounting rules have a lower salary and uh, mutual fund uh, industry may, if you have a buy side equity analyst, they have much higher, higher, um, higher salaries. You could Google it as well. What's the salary for a buy side analyst in a mutual fund? If you go to Glassdoor, you'll, you'll know the salaries and you, you also see what's the salary for a fund accountant, a fund accounting role. Uh, you'll know what are the salaries for both these profiles. It's a, for the uh, MBA finance it's a guy a student, it is easy for no uh, financial modeling to understand. Uh, theoretically, yes, but uh, I don't think MBA, you know, uh, MBA finance uh, doesn't. Uh, I don't think MBA finance goes uh, that deep into financial statement analysis. They don't teach financial statement analysis that deep for financial. A modeling you require thorough understanding of financial statement analysis, we, which we cover in this course modules. Uh, a MBA finance guy uh, is, is a good start, but the, probably the MBA finance course uh, does not help uh, with thorough understanding of financial statement analysis. So that's why, you know, even with we have uh, students which are BBA or MBA or BCom or BSc or even engineers, uh, we uh, consider them all equal, starting from zero 
and we then cover the basics of financial statement analysis uh, through from zero. But uh, yeah, MBA Finance Me, you cover few topics like managerial accounting and so on. But uh, based on my understanding, uh, these concepts are not clear with uh, every student of MBA Finance. So we, uh, in this course, again, start everything from zero and uh, try to cover all the basics altogether. Sir, how many months it, it will take? Uh, I, I guess it takes a uh, minimum, minimum of two months. So the financial modeling course requires minimum of two months, but if someone is a slow uh, learner, he could take more months as well, because you could attend these lectures as many times as you want. Uh, you could you could take more months as well. Sir, it is one to one or one to uh, one to group. It's one to group. A, a small group, but it's a one to group to us. If if Monday I miss the class, uh, how we can recover the class? Sorry, uh, I I uh, I missed a question. Okay, no. If, if I miss the one class, so there are uh, yeah yeah. If you miss a class, there are record recorded session of every class. So there is a recorded session of this class is this, this webinar also. So uh, at Mentor Me we record record all the classes, and uh, once you enroll, uh, you will get enrolled uh, you will get uh, an access to the learning portal you will get access to uh, the app and uh, you could access the class even if you miss it so once this class is over it gets uploaded on the portal uh, after one hour and you could access the recording whenever you want so the uh, the lecture is available to you on the learning portal uh, lifetime so even if you miss a class it's it's not a problem and then you have a doubt solving session every week so you could uh, you could uh, complete the class on the recorded session whenever you want and then uh, if you have doubts you could cover them in the doubt solving session which we have uh, once after, a week. Yes. after completion the course uh, we can do, uh, for the exam if uh, we pass then we can get to certificate uh, something could 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 you uh, uh could you come again uh, for the certificate sir yeah yeah for the certificate what's yeah. what's your question sorry uh, uh, no after the completion course there is exam or no yeah yeah so we uh, we we have a exam on a per module basis so I talked to you about a Excel module. I talked to you about a financial statement analysis module. I talked about a financial mathematics module. I talked about project finance module. I have an equity valuation module. So we have uh, five modules and we have a communication skills module, sixth module. So you will have, for... yeah, just one minute, Harsh. Sir, I'll, I'll, for... I'll, Harsh, I'll ask, I'll, I'll answer Hussein first, okay? Okay. So, uh, so Hussein, I was talking about, we have these six modules and we can, uh, after you complete each of these modules, there will be graded assignments. So you will have to complete an assignment. And once you complete that assignment successfully, you will get a certificate right there itself on the portal. So you will have certificates on all of the modules individually, and you'll have a, a certificate on financial modeling as well. Hussein, uh, does it answer your question? Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. So Harsha, you were asking something. Sorry. Uh, the sir, the course includes uh, forecasting and budgeting also. Yeah. So project finance may you will be forecasting uh, uh, on the per project basis, which helps in budgeting, and uh, in equity research, we'll be forecasting for the whole company, so it helps in forecasting budgeting as well. Okay, sir. So Shubham has asked me a question on um, on a chat. He's asking me to share the insights when uh, I'm working as a financial analyst in the corporate. Uh, what uh, all were my day-to-day -day tasks? So I see. So look, I'm as I'm a buy-side equity analyst. So uh, I cover a set of sectors. So my day-to-day -day tasks are first. Uh, when I go to my office, I look at my mails. I what I see uh, what is 
uh, what are any new research reports that have come up on my names on my set of stocks if there is a new, new research report i will read that research report i will see what is the uh, analyst talking about and what is the new information and whatever is the new information i will summarize it and send a mail on that to my fund manager the next step is uh, whatever is the new information i will uh, include that in my financial model i will tweak my financial model to add that new information once i have that i'll see if my price target is changing by a huge margin if it's not changing my huge margin i'll update that on my portal we have a portal after that i i go through the news and any earnings uh, that i had and uh, then if the, if the news is big and it's going to impact my stocks I will see how that news is going to impact my stocks again in the financial model. Suppose I'll tell you if uh, I'm I'm looking at Bharti Airtel, and suppose Bharti Airtel CEO says that they're going to increase the prices of telecom by twenty percent in the next quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my financial model. I will check my pricing assumptions for next year, and I will see if I I increase it by twenty percent. what happens to my revenues what happens to my cash flows and what happens to my price target and all of that changes i will do and i will again send that to my fund manager so day in day out looking at news looking at earnings looking at management calls any new information that we get we have to tweak our financial models according to the new information and according to that my price target changes and i'll convey all of that information to my fund manager at the end i have a call with my fund manager where will with whom uh, with whom i'm discussing everything on a day to day basis so all of the news all of the research reports i will be discussing with him in the evening and uh, and that is uh, how i how i go about it on a day to day basis so any any more questions guys anyone sir uh, how mock interviews will taken place mock interviews is people like me there are few other industry analysts as well uh, they will take your interviews uh, on on zoom on a, in an online way where uh, yeah after completing the module uh, it will be similar to a industry interview right it will be similar to an interview which you have in industry i will have uh, interviews and uh, after the interview we'll give you the feedback so uh, you you'll not just have one interviews you'll have uh, mock interviews lined up one after another so that you get your feedback you improve on your skills and again get uh, go through a new new mock interview so the uh, thinking is uh, you get your feedback you learn you improve and then your performance in the interviews improves uh, in every mock interview so it will uh, one to one or one to group something it is one to one So it is on a Zoom call when everyone is listening, but the interview is one to one. Okay, okay. Everyone listens to it so that everyone gets to learn from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. okay, guys. Any any other doubts? Anyone? Okay, hey guys. With no doubts, uh, we'll we'll uh, stop here. Okay. So hope uh, hope to see you guys again, and we'll we'll stop uh, the session here.